Welcome to Topaz, the initial offering from the new mainframe focus to CompuWare. As the stewardship of the mainframe platform moves to the next generation of programmer, it becomes clear that the biggest hurdle isn't the technical aspects of the job, but rather learning the company's intellectual property, the application and data that have been honed over years and years of revisions. This intellectual property, or IP, is the essence of a company and often comprises their competitive advantage within their industry. Topaz empowers the next generation programmer to quickly discover, understand, visualize, and work with both mainframe and non-mainframe data in a common, intuitive manner. It allows them to both preserve the current IP of their company and advance it as companies move to new initiatives like mobile and big data analytics, increasing their application understanding while stressing design simplicity and usability. Let's start with the visualizer. This graphically shows your company's data objects and the relationships between those objects. Another way of thinking this is a visual representation of that intellectual property we were talking about. Clicking into one of these objects returns some information. First thing it does is it highlights other objects that have a relationship with this object. And if we right click and select properties, we can see specifics about a particular object. In this case, it's a DB2 table. So with one simple click, we can see both that this is a DB2 table and what other objects it has relationships with. For instance, if we click into the center of the Ferris wheel, we can see that that one object has relationships with many other objects. Now let's talk about some use cases here. One is if you want to do some data extraction, for instance, for testing purposes or possibly to move that data to a you know, big data analytics, this isolates some easy extraction possibilities. For instance, this little tree of five objects, since it's so independent, could be easily extracted at any given time and that data moved along as necessary where if we look at it, one of the deeper examples, it would clearly be a much more complex related extract. Another common usage case is a programmer charged with making changes to a table, and they want to gather some information about that table. The first thing they'll do is isolate where that table exists inside the visualization, effectively finding the needle in the haystack. In our case, the table is reorg frequencies. Second thing they could do is click into that icon to gain more information about this. And clicking that icon will also show what other objects have relationships with that DB2 table reorg frequency. So these are the objects this programmer may have to take into account as they make their changes. To get details on those objects, we can click on the relationship view on the bottom. And this will give us a table with detailed information about those relationships including both the parent columns and the dependent columns. So the programmer with a few clicks here can begin to understand the implications of making changes to that table. One thing to note here is that this is a relatively simple visualization. When we get these visualizations from our customers, we often see five, six, seven, eight hundred objects in one visualization. And really at that point, it can only be understood visually. No. Excel spreadsheet could capture the relationships of that many objects. We also provide some filtering capabilities to allow you to isolate areas of interest. So for instance, if we click into the more complicated area of this visualization, and again, if we go to the properties, we can see that that area is assigned to the group ID 351. If you wanted to isolate that part of the visualization, we have some filtering capabilities to do that. If we click on Relationship Filter and select Group ID, and then just filter out every other Group ID but the one we're interested in, that will kind of remove the noise from our visualization and allow us to concentrate on the object relationships that we're most interested in. And that gives you a chance to manage even an extremely large visualization. Another useful capability is the ability to zoom in 
on a particular area of the visualization of interest. So by doing a simple Alt and left click, you can zoom the visualization in to isolate a specific area. In our case, we're going to hone in on that Ferris wheel type object in our visualization. And as you make the visualization larger, you can see that the actual object names become apparent. We've used the visualizer to help us with related extracts and with table changes. It's also dense with other useful information. If we move over to this much simpler example, straight lines indicate RI relationships as established in the catalog, while dashed lines represent AR or application relationships. Likewise, the color of the icons pass the meaning. These yellow icons indicate MVS files, either vSAM or sequential files. And this slightly larger icon is an IMS database that's processed in the relationship visualizer as what's known as key files. So in this smaller example, we can see AR relationships between DB2 tables and MVS files and RI relationships across DB2 tables. One last point. You can also control the format of the visualization by selecting various layouts. This allows you to pick the layout that best suits your requirements. The visualizer can also be used to visualize non-mainframe data objects and their relationships. Now that we've used the visualizer to help us understand our data, the next logical step might be to edit and browse the data. And Topaz can help us here too. First, we're going to flip over to the file a data editor. And here we're going to bring up a couple browse sessions using some predefined favorites. This first one is going to open up a DB2 customer table. And here it opens it up in kind of a classic spreadsheet form. And you can manipulate this data in a very intuitive manner. Clicking into a header sorts it by that column. You can do things like hide or freeze columns. Uh, you can hide rows if you're not interested in them. Um, we're browsing, but had we been editing this table, we could just click into a cell to update a row. And again, this is using DB2 data. Now with Topaz, you can also access, for instance, SQL Server data. So we're bringing up another predefined favorite, and now we're edit browsing a SQL Server table. And here we have the exact same capabilities once we're in the editor. You know, clicking on a column sorts the column. We can freeze columns, hide columns, etc. So in one case, we're editing DB2 table, and in another case, we're editing SQL Server table. And if I drag the SQL Server table down to the bottom, we're now editing them top to bottom. So this is one editor taking a data is data approach regardless of the data source. SQL Server, Sybase, Oracle, DB2 LUW, DB2 on the mainframe, vSAM, IMS, Sequential, they all use the same editor with the same kind of WYSIWYG look and feel to manipulate the data. And again, this is an emphasis point of Topaz in that present the data that's the most, in a way that's most comfortable to that next generation programmer. Another thing you can do is you can actually manipulate what's being viewed. So if we pop open the dialog box, if we're not interested in seeing all the columns, we can control that. Or if we're not, if we're interested in filtering on the rows, we can simply select a column and our criteria, and that will filter the row appropriately. And you'll notice that we're manipulating it through a common, you know, dialogue-oriented manner. But if you look down towards the bottom, you can also see the subsequent SQL code generated. And now if we run that, it'll open up that SQL Server table, but only bring in the rows that match that selection criteria. And that's why we think that the Topaz will be valuable beyond programmers. For instance, for data architects, or some of our customers are even approaching business analysts to see if they want to use Topaz to isolate the data that they're interested in. 
because at this point you could export that data, for instance, into an Excel spreadsheet and manipulate it however you wanted to. So, you, so it's using a common intuitive technique to allow you to manipulate data regardless of the data source. So now we've used visualization to help us understand data. We've shown how you can use Topaz to edit and browse data under a common editor regardless of the data source. Now let's move on and talk a little bit about one other capability within Topaz. So first we'll clear the palette here and we'll move to what we call the Host Explorer perspective. And we should really spend a little time talking about some capabilities that we're not touching on. Compure has API enabled all of our mainframe products so they can communicate with Topaz. So for instance, you can see all of our products in the Compure pulldown and you'll notice Expediter on the upper right. So for instance, you can, using Topaz, you can initiate an Expediter debug configuration to debug batch, CICS, IMS, DB2 stored procedures. With Expediter performing the functions on the back end on the mainframe, and you viewing, running the debug session through the Eclipse debugger provided through Topaz. Likewise, we've provided an intelligent source code editor so you can edit COBOL, PL1, Assembler, Java using an intelligent source code editor. We've also enabled some functionality not ordinarily associated with Compure. For instance, if we drill down into our host explorer view onto one of our mainframes, you can see that we've provided the ability to map data sets against selection criteria. So here's the data sets that match all of that criteria. And you can see from the icons that there's some PDSs and PDSEs and vSAM files. Here, this data set happened to be migrated, and with a right click, we can do a recall. Likewise, you can submit JCL, you can view JES output. You know, what we're trying to do is have Topaz provide a majority of the functionality that a, the next generation programmer needs to complete day-to-day -day type processing. What we're talking about right now, though, is the ability to move, copy data from one host to another. And here, what I'm going to do is just highlight three files and drop them onto a second LPAR. And it opens up this dialog that says it's going to copy those three files to another host. And with one drag and drop and one click, you can see it's copied these three files from one of our LPARs, the CW1 LPAR, to another LPAR, our CW6 LPAR. And notice one of these files was a vSAM file. And again, this the use case here might be, you know, sites moving to R, D, and T boxes might want to move data back and forth. Or some cases, there are sites that do development on multiple LPARs, and this allows them to easily move resources across those LPARs to, again, to accomplish their day-to-day -day functions. And this was doable historically with FTP or with IBM's bulk data transfer, but nothing is easier than a drag and drop. And that concludes the demo of Topaz. We've shown you the visualizer, the ability to edit and browse data regardless of its source, and the ability to easily copy data from one host to another host. And remember, Compuware is now an agile organization, so expect more value with upcoming quarters. Mm -hmm.